I said, yo, TWIF week 11, we're just, this is just going to be a review since we're about to go into the playoffs. I'm not even going to talk about next week's games. I'm just going to talk about what happened. So we're just going to go over a few weeks, just kind of general trends. Uh, I've been on a killing spree lately. It was recently ended by Cameron. No one better to end your killing spree than Cameron. I mean, Kevin's been a mess. He's been having awful games like this. Weston's been surging. Ben Ben and Aaron have both been good, but not great. Kind of like consistently good, but they've had a lot of luck. Seagouch has been either terrible or amazing as usual. Spencer ha had been doing poorly, but now he's making big moves, and it looks like he's going to surge into the playoffs in that atrocious central group that will soon officially be renamed the Group of Death, as Spencer unironically called it in Week 2. And Disco is just losing games left and right. At least he set his lineup, though, this week. So No Fried also has been doing very well. If we look at Week 8, or uh, Week 9, excuse me, I mean, I won again, got kind of lucky there. Lily's been doing really well this season, actually, behind Todd Gurley, who she just traded to Spencer. A huge move, dealing possibly the best running back in the league for a quarterback when she already has a what some would say is like a good one. It means that Spencer has an, a very good team currently, but no depth. I mean, we can go look at that right now, in fact. Garbage. Okay, so he has Cam Newton, very good, running quarterback, consistent points every week. Latavius Murray, consistent points every week, pretty much. I mean, he's there. I'd, if, I'd say, like, if a running back is getting five or more, he's startable. And if he's getting ten or more, he's a god. It's just like the current state of run, running backs. And he has this Chiefs fiasco, which is actually doing him really well. I saw he traded. Yeah, excuse me, he tr had to trade away something semi-significant for what was seemingly like a backup. So that was a very good move by Spencer to get this player before people knew about him. Mike Evans, I mean, we'll peak his stats. If you watch the Cowboy game, he dropped a fuckload of balls. I don't think he's particularly talented, but he puts up good points. Stephon Diggs, I'm going to be honest, I haven't heard of this guy. Uh, you know, the Vikings are doing very well this year for what that's worth, but... Maybe this is a long shot by Spencer. I wish he would fix Skype so I could get him to comment on this. D'Angelo Williams obviously will have to swap out. I don't know what he's going to do. I would assume just find a receiver and put him in. But already you can kind of see like Spencer's stretching for receivers. But he's really top heavy in the positions that are hard to get good. So he has kind of an old school team in the sense that he has a consistent, strong quarterback, keeping in mind that Cam Newton runs, which is just disgusting yardage. Probably will be nerfed at some point, although I don't think it should be. Then he has two running backs on two teams who play other bad teams that have consistent point production. What do you know? And then someone who, two receivers who can get consistent points. Jordan Reed. I mean, it's a tight end for you. I think Spencer's team can go all the way. And it's a very unique terms in terms of uh a very unique team in terms of what the metagame is now as far as being receiver focused. Like if you look at a team like mine. Shouts to Rampy, he says that's disgusting all the time. You know, we have Phil Rivers, who's very consistent. Chris Ivory, who's been good. TJ Yeldon, who's been okay. But then you have the heavy-hitting wide receiver core of Megatron, Hopkins, and Dez. And Tony Romo's about to come back, making Dez even better. Greg Olson is, in my opinion, the best tight end in the league. He might not have the best numbers, but he's the one I would want. 
and Dan Bailey, who's a kicking prodigy and is still doing okay despite the Cowboys shitting the bed. And the Rams defense, which has been good. Now, I, I know a lot of people don't do this, so I think it'll be interesting. We're going to look at the top defenses and kickers this year. Because this is actually a lot of points. Okay. Look like Robbie Gold's in the top 10 and he's not even picked up. This happens every year because bad fantasy owners will never ever check this shit. Of course, people always get Gostowski because they know the Pats are going to score. Josh Brown, I had no idea. Santos, I had no idea. Blair Walsh, I had no idea. This is why it's usually not worth it to take a kicker early unless you can get an elite one like David Akers was last year. Not last year, but when he played. And if you look at this, like Broncos, Seahawks, Giants, Eagles, Rams, these, you know, to me, when I think, when I hear defense, historically, it's always been Steelers, Ravens, maybe like a couple Jets teams, uh, Seattle, but yeah, that's the way that is. So if we go back to the, to the uh, game center a couple weeks ago. And once again, this was an amazing game. This is like this is as entertaining as fantasy football can be, which is not very unless you're in the league. But incredibly close, two teams at at the time this match meant a lot. It pushed West it pushed Weston into the division top with me, and it meant that Aaron went from being this kind of weird team who looked really good and then terrible to then really good again it made him go back to looking like shit as opposed to winning despite the fact that Aaron is putting up decent points every week but kind of just getting unlucky and you know maybe one could argue that he's an inferior owner so someone like Spencer or Ben would have done that key free agent pickup to get him those few points he needed to win I don't know. I think he's done a pretty good job this year, and he's just gotten unlucky personally. But we can saw Ben taking down Seagouch. This was huge. This was similar to this game, two teams that were kind of on the razor's edge of falling or failing, and Ben and Weston won out. This was another good game. Spencer, you know, statement against No Fried, who was on a tear. Cameron getting a complete welfare win. At this point, Cameron was in the shitter, but he's gotten a couple welfare wins and a couple well-deserved wins. And now he's, if you look at the standings, Cameron is just as good now as Aaron, I think, right? Let's see, Cameron, 5-5. Five and five. Yeah, I was right, 5-5. Five and five. And that was after it looked like Cameron was the laughing stock of the league. And if you look at points four, he still is sitting down here, you know, at 7.30. No one else except for Disco who's had a historically bad season, is even that close. So Cameron's had some luck to catch back up the 5-5. Five and five. And if we go back to the game center, I really don't think his team has the legs to carry him. If we just go to his game this week, being bong two electric boogaloo. I hate that this is defaulted like that. So, he has Russell, William, Russell Wilson. Two years ago, this guy was the man that everyone was dick riding. Now I think Cameron, when he drafted, was behind the times. It was a bad pick, the Seahawks. I didn't think were any good at the time, and they were projected less even, which is a clear sign, because usually people are projected way too much or even. Rarely are they projected way too low, especially after big Super Bowl performances. But Alfred Morris, whatever. You kind of knew he was going to do this when he drafted him. He plays for the Redskins. Like, yeah, he's there. He gets snaps, but he's just not good. Gio Bernard, people were gassing up, expecting to get over 200 yards. Excuse me. He's just been this. He's been, you know, <coughs> he's been like TJ Yeldon has been. <laughs> he gets like eight points every week, pretty much. A little more, to be fair, but, I mean, Yeldon's not that bad. And then Nate Washington, garbage. Look at this. Nate Washington is all, this is Nate Washington's career. He'll have one good week and then do nothing for five games. 
and then he'll have one good game, a trap game. Everyone will pick him up and then start him, and then next week he's either garbage or below average. This week he's actually not terrible at 13, but then after that, trash. And he's going to have a few more weeks of trash. That's Nate Washington, guys. And then he has Malcolm Floyd. Let's take a look-see. Hmm. What do you know? Malcolm Floyd. Not bad. He's been part of the Cardinals, who have been very good this year. And any time you can jump on a train that's that's going like this, you run the risk, especially when it's a team like the Cardinals, who I really don't think are legit. I think they're like a first-round bomb-out team. But if you can hop on that train and milk the points out of it, then that just makes you smart, and that's a good move. The problem is, is Cameron going to know when to pull that punch? Or, excuse me, pull the plug and say, wow, this guy's terrible. He's gotten three points in a row and the Cardinals are shitting the bed. Cameron's so goddamn nice, he'll stick with people for way too long. And I think historically we've seen that. Cameron usually, he drafts okay to above average. And then he shits the bed in the mid-game, mid-season. And then he always ends up with teams that are... Six and eight, you know, or seven and seven, average or below average. And I think it's because he does stuff like this. And, you know, Pierre, Pierre Garcon, he's just not a good player. Like, once again, I don't understand how a Cowboy fan could justify owning two terrible receiver or two terrible players from their division opponent and starting them every week. And, you know, he got my sloppy second, Sean Avery style, with Travis Benjamin. Who gives a shit? Benjamin's been, eh, ever since I dropped him. You know, big deal. Oh, he had 10 this week. He has a quarterback, Manziel, who's never going to throw him a touchdown. He had 113 yards. That's the probably the, the most yards he'll have for the rest of the goddamn year. Travis Benjamin, he's, I mean, obviously he's worth starting, but Cameron's team, there's just whole lot of, there's just whole, not a, excuse me, there's not a whole lot there. And then Cameron drafted the Seahawks early, if I remember correctly. He had to have because he does this every year. He always gets like a big name defense. I don't think that's that good personally, but I mean, that's a preference thing. And I think having the Seahawks has been good for him. We can take a look. I mean, yeah, pretty damn good for a defense. But I just don't see Cameron's having any, Cameron's team having any legs. I mean, He's 5-5 five and five in the Eastern Division, I believe it is. It's the one with no fried, no fried Ben and Aaron. And Ben and Aaron are both 5-5, five and five, and this is it. I think if you lose this game and you're 5-5, five and five, you're donezo. And this is actually a great game to preview, so let's jump right in. So we see the king of funny, the fantasy genius, Benny Boy, is projected to lose. Rampy. <clears throat> has Marcus Mariota, who's been good despite being injured. He also has James Starks. Okay, I guess you can call him a good owner and being really low in the waiver wire for getting James Starks. Now, I haven't been following James Starks, but this is what James Starks does because I had him like five weeks ago. He has one good game. He's like Nate Washington, guys. He has one good game. Everyone picks him up. And then he's shit for weeks, and then people drop him, and he has one good game, and people people pick him up, and let's see, garbage. Okay, garbage, 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 one good game, bye week, garbage. Oh, he had another good game, and this week he had 10 points. It won't last. The Packers are floundering, and they're losing. They lost to Detroit last week. I don't think you can trust players who just get yards. Yeah, James Starks got 96 yards. I'd rather have a player that gets 50 but is gets like 50-ish, maybe can go way higher, but scores a touchdown every week. What if James Starks doesn't get as many touches next week? The logic just doesn't apply to people who consistently get touchdowns because you can trust those players more. So I don't like Starks. I do like Adrian Peterson, though. And he's been good. What do you expect? It's Adrian Peterson. Shady McCoy. Not bad. Hmm. Chris Johnson. He's on the Cardinals, of course. They've been very good this year. And he's had some bad games recently, but... 
I don't know. I would hedge the running backs to Ben. I think that the combo, Ben's combo is better than having James Starks on your team. Like, even though Adrian Peterson is better than both of Ben's backs, I think that, you know, the, they balance out and compensate better than Starks. Alan Hearns. Damn, he's been good. Brandon LaFell, by the way, I haven't researched this, so a lot of this I already know, but some of it I don't like. I don't know off the top of my head how good Brandon LaFell has been this year. I mean, he's been okay. Yeah, I'm going to hedge the hedge the receivers to Ben as well. Both Amari Cooper and Hearns catch a lot of touchdowns. And A.J. Green is very good, but he hasn't been himself this year. Brandon LaFell is not that great. So Ben's getting the edge. And then the rest, it doesn't really matter. Like, it's just a lot. It's a lot of people who are really similar. So I'm actually going to pick Ben to win this game, even though he's projected to lose. And I think uh, once Aaron loses, he's done ski. I think it's over for Rampy. Even though Rampy kind of managed his team well this year, he just got kind of unlucky. And he didn't manage anywhere close up to the level of someone like Spencer. So there's that. So if we go back in the past, we're about to wrap things up. I mean, Lily lost. I lost. Cameron put up a lot of points, and Cameron deserved the win. But if it wasn't for that couple of joke weeks right before, it would just be an irrelevant win. Now he's 5-5. Five and five. He's in the same place as Rampy, who's put up tons of points every week in the same position as Ben, who's had injuries and has made a lot of deals. <coughs> as far as picking people up, I think, and like finding good people and just writing them out like a good fantasy owner. Cameron's in the same place, so it's just kind of interesting. Especially when you see how many, how uh, few points he has. This was heartbreaking. Clap for beating Weston. And Black, Black Magic is just putting up awful points every week. Just terrible. Ben got smoked. And Rampy with a win. And by the way, I'm not narrating everything because we got lots of weeks. So, D Okay, let me just give my thoughts on the teams up to this point. We'll end the video. I've already said a lot of this stuff. So we got my team. You know, I went on a, a killing spree there. I beat a lot of people. And a lot of people that was, you know, kind of rivals with. And I think my team is good, but doesn't have a lot of depth. And it's very reliant on receivers. I mean, I said all this at the beginning of the year. It just turned out that the team was good. And I didn't get really unlucky. So, I mean, a lot of this is luck. There's no denying it. Lily's team has been above average. I think the Todd Gurley trade was a mistake. Uh, I think she would have been better off rolling the dice with Peyton and having a consistent point getter. But what do I know? Seagouch has like five buys this week. Excuse me. Absolute joke. Weston is on fire and I desperately need him to lose and Seagouch is a dead man walking for this week. Win for sure to Weston. Black Magic has been floundering. Clap4 has made some moves and has looked not bad, so I'm impressed with him. You know, I'll edge it to uh, Kevin there. Kevin the commish, not Travier. Disco's been atrocious. Spencer's cooking. Spencer easy. Uh, no Fright has been very good. Has had a couple of good games with people in the league who have went off on him, and he's lost a couple close ones, so I don't really think Cameron is the real deal, to be honest. And no fried's going to get that one. And then Ben and Faith Age. This was my match of the week. I already kind of did it. This match will define the season, I think. It's an inspiration. When you check your fantasy football on Sunday, check this match. This match is very, very important to the league. All right. Leave a comment on the YouTube video, not on the fantasy website, if you liked it. Tell me if you think I'm wrong. Tell me if you thought I brought up good points or I showed something unique. Just give me something because I need to know what to do and what not.